Hello my friends, the new wipe is just around the corner and you have obviously clicked on this video with the intent of leveling up as fast as possible once the day comes, so thank you for clicking on this video and let me know what you think at the end of it. First thing I want to talk about is that you should play a lot slower early wipe than you do late wipe for example, because people will find their Salewas, they will find their gas analyzers, they will complete the pocket watch, whatever. They get their item and they want to get out as soon as possible, so that gives you an opportunity to kill more scavs later in the raid. Once most players have either died or just left the raid, all you have to worry about is scavs and depending on the map, scav players. So for example, if you play interchange, obviously people are going to go in there. They're going to loot Ollie for hideout items and quest items. And But for example, in customs, no one really scavs in customs. So think about the maps that you play and if you have to worry about scav players. Also, another thing that falls into the category is try not to give out too much information about your location. For example, try your best to kill a scav as fast as possible and move on, especially if you kill a scav in a in an open area or in a hotspot, for example, in the middle of construction, like that's a hotspot and it's an open area. So it's probably best not to loot that scav. Keep moving. If you do make noise, move on. So if someone does go to the area that you made noise on, you're already gone and you do not have to worry about getting killed there. Because the longer you are in a fight with either scavs or players, the more people are just going to get dragged into it. Whether you like it or not, you will end up dead eventually. And at the same time, try to take in all of that information yourself and play around that. Even if you want to go to dorms in this raid and you hear people mag dumping each other in dorms, just skip it and come back another raid. Really quickly want to touch on the headshot. So if you kill anything with a headshot, scav or a player, it gives you a 1.2x XP gain on top of the kill. So make sure you kill a scav if possible with a headshot every single time. Also, if you have access to scopes, long shots give you an extra 100 XP on top of all of that. So, so ideally, if you have a scope, you want to kill scavs at a long range with a headshot for the optimal amount of XP, if you will. Third thing for XP is obviously looting and picking up items. This one's kind of obvious, but obviously the more looting you do, the more XP you're going to end up accumulating. All those duffel bags, safes, toolboxes, all of that. The more items they have in them, the more XP you get. And one big thing that a lot of people miss, especially new players, is that when you kill a scav, you see a dead body, you do not want to loot them, but just go up to the scav, press search on them. That gives you free XP, depending on how much loot they have on them. This can range from 30 XP to 250 XP. So even if you do not intend to search the scav or the, the bodies of the PMCs, just click through them for free XP. Just go to them, press search, get that XP and get out. Now you can call me Captain Obvious if you wish. But the most important thing at the end of the day is surviving. So extracting by itself gives you XP. But once you do, whatever the amount of XP you accumulated during the raid from either killing scavs, killing them with a headshot, long shots, looting, healing, all of that is going to be multiplied by 1.3x, which means for every 1000 XP that you gain in the raid, you will get a, add a bonus of 300 XP on top of that. So if you survive a raid, you get 3000 XP in that raid, you're going to get 900 XP on top of that. So surviving is absolutely crucial just for the XP, but also obviously you want to bring those quest items that you found in the raid. You want to bring them out so you can complete the required tasks in the future. Like I just said, surviving gives you 1.3x the XP, but how do you actually survive more rates it's actually quite simple once you have set a goal it could be either level 15 to unlock the flea market it could be level 30 or level 42 max traders whatever it is it is essential that you avoid pvp like the plague especially during the first week or so because if you think about it you have everything to lose and pretty much nothing to gain at this point. Do you really want that stock M4 from the level 3 gamer? Or would you rather go loot a building full of potential loot for your either your hideout or your upcoming tasks, for example? For sure, they will have stuff they picked up on them. But in my opinion, it is not worth risking your items or the items that you can potentially find in the raid and take out just for the wild chance of them having something you might need. Because 99% of the players will shove the valuables into their prison pockets and that includes items like salewas because they are the valuable items during those early levels and no one wants you to pr progress either because those salewas are going to be hard to find early now healing and consumables is another source of xp i think most of us know that if you heal during your raid you can see the xp is gonna go up you're uh, gonna gain xp from that you get one xp for every one hp that you heal uh, around 30 HPs for fractures and 25 for every single bleed you fix. Same with consumables. So if you are hungry or thirsty, you get one XP for every one point of energy or hydration you restore during the raid, which goes hand in hand with uh, leveling up metabolism. So make sure to 
eat as much as you can in the raid especially if you find a bottle of water and you're not going to carry it out even if you are 95 hydration just drink it only 5 xp but it does level up your metabolism as well uh, a little bonus tip if you will do not heal with the therapist for money even if you can heal for free up until level 5 i believe it's better for you to use a med kit for example if you have a grizzly in your stash you're probably not going to take it into raid I would just use that up in the stash. I would skip the therapist heal. I would go into my stash. I would use the grizzly to heal. And that also gives you uh, free XP. It's not a lot, but it's going to add up a uh, rate after rate. So if you can afford it, make sure to use a med kit in your stash. It doesn't have to be a grizzly. It can be the AI2s, car med kits, whatever it is. If you have a few extra, make sure to use them. Especially if you're going to use them for crafts in your hideout. So if you have a car med kit that you're going to use up, just use it up to the lowest amount possible you can still use it for craft and you get free xp and finally we have reached to our favorite topic in escape from tarkov which is questing xd eft wiki has provided us with a picture that shows us every single item required for a task throughout your escape from tarkov obviously items can be added with a new wipe since there is possibly more tasks especially this wipe we're gonna get streets of tarkov so there's definitely going to be tasks there that will require items and whatnot. So it is subject to change for sure. But if you look at the picture, the items highlighted in green are the items that you need to find in the raid yourself. The ones that aren't green can be bought from either traders or flea market. Also, if you look at the items by traders, they are in chronological order. So if you look at the very first task from Prepper, which requires us to kill five scabs and hand in two shotguns. The shotguns themselves do not have to be found in raid and you can see that in the picture that's why majority of the players complete introduction first from mechanic to unlock jaeger so they can buy the shotguns from jaeger level one the main point that i wanted to make though is that even though you do not need to find three gas analyzers or four morphines for therapists before you hand in the three stalewas if you do find these, make sure to take them out of the raid and keep them in your stash for whenever you do need them. Since collecting these items in advance can really catapult you forward on your level grind during questing. Same with keys. If you have been loading jackets, for example, you get XP from loading jackets. You can see on this picture which keys you will need for upcoming tasks, which also once again comes in really handy when you do unlock the task to visit a certain room for a pickup or whatever. It's always better to have that key ready beforehand than go out and start looking for it once you eventually do unlock the task. Also, if you find multiple instances of certain keys, they can go for a decent price on flea market as well. I will drop the link of the picture in the description. You do not have to memorize it, but at least take a look at it. Maybe something will stick with it that you would otherwise have passed on during the early wipe and it's not a bad idea to have this open on your second monitor for example and finally we have reached to daily and weekly tasks you unlock daily tasks at level 5 and weekly tasks at level 15 when you are doing daily or weekly tasks you have to consider two things is the award worth it and i don't mean just the xp i mean the actual items because you can find items that you might require for tasks so if one of the dailies has a flash drive for example you probably want to do it because sometimes it's a pain in the ass to get those flash drives but the second option to consider is can you pair it up with something else so if either of those aren't true then you can either ignore the task or you can replace it you can do that unlimited times but the price will increase every single time you replace it so obviously weekly tasks will have massively higher fee to replace so make sure that you're not wasting your time with dailies or weeklies I uh, also want to touch on efficiency, which is literally the key to leveling up fast. Like I said, with dailies and weekly tasks, it is extremely efficient to pair them up with your main tasks as well. But also pair up your main tasks with other main tasks, if that makes sense. The more you do in one raid, the better. But at the same time, try not to do everything in a single raid. If you have five tasks in Lighthouse, for example, it will be super efficient to do them in one raid for sure. But if you have to run back and forth across the map for different pickups, it's going to increase your chance of being spotted and killed by a lot. I usually try not to have more than three objectives in a given raid but obviously it's from task to task basis if there is a two su super simple tasks i might pair it up with another two so so before you go into raid make sure you take a look at what tasks you have in that certain map so if you do happen to get sidetracked you can go instead of completing task a and task b you, you can complete task a and task c if that makes sense I would also like to point out that I am streaming right here on YouTube and I will be doing so on the day of the wipe and early wipe in general. So make sure to turn on notifications to catch my streams, my friends. Thank you for watching. I would greatly appreciate it if you could like and subscribe since it will help push out the video to more people and I would love to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or join my Discord. Link is in the description. Thanks again and have a good day, my friends.